How did dragons get aloft? A look inside this dragon's body will reveal the most ingenious adaptation in the natural history of flight. A system that remained largely unchanged for millions of years from the early prehistoric dragon to this species found in the ice, the mountain dragon of western myth and legend. The initial analysis of this dragon shows other adaptations for flight besides the obvious wings. The chest points towards a clear function. It's powerful, heavily muscled, similar to what one would see on birds of prey like falcons and eagles. Preliminary internal scans of the body are more revealing. A massive heart, also indicative of powered flight. The chest muscles would need large quantities of oxygen-rich blood to maintain a steady wing beat. The bones are perfectly designed for flight too. The internal structure is very specialized. It's honeycombed, a skeletal design also found in birds, strong but very lightweight. All of these adaptations are general characteristics of powered flight. But this creature still looks too heavy to be supported by such relatively small wings. They couldn't possibly generate the kind of lift needed to get an animal this big off the ground. The wingspan measures under 20 feet. And with an initial estimated weight of 900 pounds, scientists would have to probe deeper to find the key to dragon flight. Continued scanning shows something more unusual inside the chest cavity, a pair of leathery organs resembling a second pair of lungs. The tissue walls of these organs are thin and elastic, designed to expand. They're storage sacs. What do they hold? The answer escapes with a hiss. Gas. Not gas from decomposition, the specimen is too well preserved. This gas was present while the animal was still alive. But what is it? Analysis proves the gas is composed predominantly of hydrogen. Hydrogen gas is 14 times less dense than air. Fill a balloon with hydrogen and it rises. Fill these organs with hydrogen and the principle is the same. These are the dragon's flight bladders. But how did dragons produce the hydrogen that got them off the ground? Getting off the ground, it's a problem confronting the young prehistoric dragon as well. Unable to hunt, he exploits the only food available to him. Even in death, his mother may still help him live. She may even still help him to fly. All creatures contain bacteria in their gut that help break down food. And in the process, the bacteria release metabolic byproducts, gas. But the bacteria inside dragons are unique. They release hydrogen. And unlike other animals, a dragon's gas doesn't go to waste. The hydrogen is channeled into the two storage sacs, the dragon's flight bladders. Along with the super light skeleton, the gas-filled flight bladders are the keys to dragon flight. And now this young dragon's sophisticated flight system is about to be put to the test. While the pterosaurs wait their turn, a more dangerous creature has picked up the scent of his decomposing mother, an older male dragon. Its broken horns and dull appearance betray a dragon at the end of his days. Constant territorial battles mean that male dragons rarely reach old age. Few live past 40. Pushed from his territory by a younger and fitter male, this dragon is a nomad. He now wanders in search of food, scavenging other kills more often than making his own. But given the choice, he'd prefer fresh meat. And this time, the young dragon's mother isn't there to save him. 
The old nomad closes with surprising speed. The juvenile's only hope of survival is to get airborne. Cleverly, he heads for the trees. He knows the old male cannot fly here. Inside, his body is working overtime, his heart beating, his muscles pumping, hydrogen being generated at a prodigious rate. But it's still not enough. His flight bladders may be full, but so is his stomach. The undigested meat is weighing him down, and so instinct takes over. At the last moment, he empties his stomach and spreads his wings at last. The young dragon takes flight for the first time in his life. But if he's lived to fight another day, he will have to master another legendary evolutionary adaptation. He must learn to breathe fire.